So thank you guys so much for being here on the last day for making it through. My name's Esther Huang. This is my beautiful associate director of transfer admissions at Biola University. I am the assistant director of transfer admissions. Um, Angela has been with Biola for 15 years. I've been with Biola working for three, but I did my master's program for four. So I've been at the institution for a total of seven years. Um, hometown, we're both born and bred California girls. County, Our so university is literally on, in, it's in LA County, but like a neighboring city right adjacent to us is Orange County. So we're about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes from Disneyland um, if you drive down south. And without traffic, we're about 25 minutes from downtown LA. With traffic, it's an hour. 25 so it's gross i know but that's where we're housed it's a pretty dope location i love it yeah it's it's literally like a part of just culture you got to go somewhere you got to check what time you're leaving to figure out how long it will get you there so um yeah, today uh, we'll break this down a little bit more, but we pretty much are going to share with you our strategies behind re-recruiting sideline students. So sideline students are students who have already been through your funnel, who have either submitted an application, who have maybe even been admitted. For us, we have to confirm. They put in a deposit so that they confirm and say, yes, I am att attending Biola University. So this is, a, this is our strategy of re-recruiting that population because it did increase a little bit, and we'll go a little bit more into that and so uh, ultimately it's to increase enrollment so hopefully you guys like that um, like I said ideas 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 let's just leave with ideas and then you take them and do what you can with them we'll do the same because in the end it's just if we're cycling the same ideas from the same place it's like oh, well, I'm missing out on on this you know so hopefully you can leave with some ideas that you can implement and then um, at Biola we are we are super intentional and about building relationships with our in, uh, prospective students, our admitted students. Like, we are intentional with building relationships and, and reaching out to our outward facing student population. So we do a lot of, like I do a lot of personal like building uh, relationships with text messages, phone calls, emails, uh, providing opportunities to connect with uh, um, incoming students, all of that stuff. So hopefully, you, you guys can understand and, and realize like the, the importance and the power behind um, intentional uh, communication and relationship building. Thanks, Esther. So I am interested in getting a sense for what you were here. Why did you choose this session? What are you hoping to um, you know, take home with you from this session? So any brave souls wanna just share I can bring the mic to you, or you can just shout it out. What you were hoping for? Yeah. I come with the University of South Carolina. We're just starting or trying to do some of those re-recruiting. Um, so kind of just trying to figure out the best strategies for doing that. So strategies for re-recruiting. That's beautiful. Absolutely. Any other? Yes. So I'm from Penn State in Ohio. Sorry, I'll share now, we'll speak to it throughout. Uh, a sideline student, as Esther shared, um, is a student who either inquired with us, either uh, maybe they started an application. A started app is a student who like got on there. It's, it's kind of like a glorified inquiry, right? They started filling it out, but for whatever reason just didn't submit it. And then we have submitted applicants. These are students who did submit the application again, for whatever reason, did not complete the supplemental items that we ask for. At Biola, we ask for a personal essay, like many other institutions, and their transcript. Um, and for whatever reason, those items just don't, don't come. And then we have our admitted students, so students we did offer admission to, and as Esther said, those confirmed students that did deposit. And so within any, at any point within the funnel, those students if they chose, let's say, because we're working with transfer students, these are students who said they could they could have been in high school, they could have been juniors in high school, if they 
inquired, they could have been seniors in high school, but they've communicated to our institution, hey, I want to be at Biola at some point. I want, I see myself there. They've come to a visit day, they've worked closely with our counselors and developed deep relationship, and they say, I wanna be there, but I can't yet for financial reasons, for, um, they don't know their major yet, and it makes them nervous, so they want to go to community college to figure things out a little bit, or their, their family situation just doesn't permit them to start at Biola just yet. So, so we want to stay engaged with these students, right? In a sales sense, they're warm leads. They're students that have had a taste for, uh, for Biola, they love it, and they really want to stay involved and engaged, and we want to help them do that because once they get on that community college campus, at least for the state of California, to give you some a little bit of a backdrop, we have our um, California community colleges, there's about 19 of them. Then we have our, our UC system, there's about nine UC institutions. Then we have our Cal State University system, there's about 23 Cal State University institutions. And then we have uh, about 150 not, or, uh, nonprofit higher ed institutions, four-year institutions, and then we have about 120 for-profit. So there is a lot of choice. There's a lot of selection. A student can really go any which way. And as you already know, I'm sure at your institutions, this process can be quite intimidating and quite confusing for some students. And so our desire is really helping them, helping clarify the process and keeping in touch with them so that we can do this well so that we can partner with them so that they can achieve their goal. So sideline student is really, to boil it down, any student who's previously applied or made some kind of contact, and then they communicated to us, I want to postpone, I want to defer my time. And so, yes? Yes, yes, absolutely. They are, and it is a population my team works with. They're the readmit population. So this population here is the reactivate population. So that's just how we term them for the institution because there's so many different kind of student types. Even within this postponed population, there, I there are readmit postpones. So there are students who actually, they did stop out, there they were stopouts, then they reapplied or submitted a re, uh, readmit application, and then they said, Esther, I can't come this semester, so then we postpone their readmit application. So then they reactivate, reactivate readmits. For the simplicity of this presentation, we're just focusing on transfer students um, because we're, we're, we're committed to increasing our transfer student population and, um, and serving them well and helping you know, how many, in California, the percentage of transfer students that actually leave their community college is, it's just, it's like something like 14%. And so it is just so confusing for a student. And we have two main pathways, now, now three, with something called the ADT, the Associate Degree for Transfer. And then we have our private institutions. So for example, right now I'm working with, I'm wor working with partners in the, with the AICCU for regional partnerships for private institutions in partnership with our community colleges um, to try and see how can we clarify some of this because there's so much choice. All we want is we want our students to graduate. Honestly, I would love for a student to come to Biola, but not every student will, And but I, do, I want them to finish, you know? I want them to graduate, so. Any other questions or? Oh, thank you, yes, please. Can you, can you def FTIC? First time, yes, first time college students, great. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, of course. So first time in college students, students that, that check you out, um, but their plan is to go to community college. How do you stay in touch with them, and how do you cultivate their relationship with them while they're at the community college to bring them back to, to Harding, right? Okay, it's beautiful, great. 
So quickly, so the, the backdrop of the pandemic, it's impacted all of us, correct? In California, we thought it would be helpful for you to just have a little glimpse about how, into how we've been impacted. Um, and so first, uh, the, the, R, the P, R, R, RP group, excuse me, <laughs> um, they just published a briefing in uh, like December and where they surveyed 8,000 California Community College students who were higher unit transfers. So these are transfers who are nearly done with their associates. And to ask them, how did the pandemic impact your transfer plans or just your life in general? So 40% said, it absolutely interrupted my transfer plans. I was on target to transfer, and then I chose not to. For a myriad of reasons, they were sideline students, right? Kind of put on pause. And some of them with, with wonderings of, well, what do I do now? I was like nearly done or, or done. 75% um, of them said, so any kind of communication with my counselor at my community college and some of the institutions that I was interested in kind of stalled out. So I didn't know how to get my questions answered. I didn't know if I could take a pass, no pass class. And, and if my, that institution I was hoping to attend would receive that credit. I didn't know if I had to submit my SAT, ACT scores, if it was a lower unit transfer. Um, so 75%, that's a high percentage of students who just simply felt confused and frustrated and, and frankly afraid, just kind of, what do I do? And then 40% of, of students expressed um, a need for easier communication with the institution, it just a need to feel not just to like get questions answered, but to feel brought into the institution. So they would have benefited from access to academic advising. They would have benefited from access to a connection to their major. Kind of no-brainer stuff in some senses, but, but um, the students just felt that they just didn't have access to these, uh, to these channels into the institutions they were considering. So the group, suggested some recommendations to make students happy or to help or to bring solutions. So 40% of these students, they recommended make clear personalized pathways for these students. Now, let's not think systemic, but let's think one, one for one. Personalized pathways, opportunities to sit down with a student and plan out what they want their time to look like, opportunities for the admissions counselor to talk to their community college counselor and say, hey, student, student wants to do this, let's partner together and let's do this. So create those opportunities. Um, for the 75% who said, I, I just didn't know, create easy opportunities to connect. Get on, get on TikTok, that's our next goal, huh, Esther? Get on TikTok, um, Instagram, use Instagram to, to communicate this, the pass no pass situation, right? Tell students that again and again and again. Story the transfer student's story. Uh, use uh, email. We use text. We use text like crazy. It is, Esther will share with you how, how receptive students are to this. And then for the other 40% of students, um, where you can, where you can start building relationship with your campus partners, get those students to connect over Zoom or on campus, get them to connect with your academic advising office, you know, provide those opportunities. For these students who many in your institution will say, well, they're not rostered students, they're not admitted, so why, why should I spend to talking with them? Or Esther already shared about the confirm, right, submitting that deposit. They're not deposited students, why should I talk to them? Helping your institution understand, y you should help them because it will clarify the process I mean, if we're talking about the, the altruistic sense, you should help them because it benefits the student, right? If, because we're thinking student-centric. But not everybody is. Many people are thinking bottom line. So you use your data and you, and you share because look, because look at what the trends are telling us about these students, about how they circle, about how they come back and forth. I've said a lot. Any questions to the? Okay, let's keep going. So, Doug Shapiro summarizes it well. We all experienced this on some level. Students stalled out. Our enrollments suffered in some way. For some of you, though, your enrollments might have actually done okay. Anybody, 
doing okay, in a sense. Yeah. Yep. And that was gonna be one of my questions for the group is, I think a lot of people in the pandemic, they knew they weren't at their final destination. So they may have done things earlier. And are we now in 22 going back to more of a pre-pandemic pattern where later in the process we start the application and, and transfer process? Very interesting. When we get to it, we're going to have a time of, of suggestion. There might have been some things that you and your institution did to help promote that early action. Because for some of us, our students are, um, they've either stalled out or they're just delaying and they're, they're not filling out FAFSA. In California right now, FAFSA submissions are 5% down. That's concerning, right? EAB is putting out a whole um, uh, campaign around encouraging students across the nation to submit FAFSA. I'm sorry, I'll step back. I don't want to be all up in your business. Um, Are you, are you all familiar with Tau Sigma? Is everyone familiar? It's the Transfer Honors Group. wonderful segue. We want to know what Roblox for some of you are you experiencing?
like that being our roadblock together, correct me if I'm wrong, in the transfer world, the pandemic dampened our social skills and our ability to engage across the world. How uncomfortable, it doesn't dry in a second. Come on people, we gotta talk about this. Or you have to be experiencing it because we definitely are. It's, these are huge roadblocks and it's not just like, okay, let's snow plow this out of the way and oh cute, we have a little path, but these are, they're, they're major in the back there. Yeah, I would say uh, probably one of the biggest roadblocks is being more, being more um, reactive and not proactive. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and I'll just give an example, technology. And so working at a community college, a lot of our students, when, when the pandemic happened, they didn't have the resources to be able to transition online. So then we were like, okay, let's get all our students laptops. Let's get them laptops, right? So that they can take their class. And then we're like, a month later, oh, our students don't have internet. traumatized them from seeing the effects of just being reactive. I say that because I think I definitely, like I, I, like I'm like aggressively proactive now in the work that I do only because I saw like the effects of just staying so uh, reactive. So I was aggressively proactive now, but it's because I don't want that kind of, that, that, the mess, almost train wrecks, right, happening again. Anyone else feel a shift of reactive to proactive? Yeah, yeah, some. Anyone still just reactive, like stuck being reactive? I mean, six years with the CRM, y'all. I can't just, let's just, let's just, let's just sit in that with her, okay? <laughs> like empaths, let's turn that on. Um, how about just proact, pretty like pro left reactive and been proactive and has been good at being proactive? Anyone? A little no. It's just kind of stay it's staying. Y'all just kind of stay in a proactive posture. Okay. Okay. That is a great distinction. <laughs> Woo, 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 shift, go here, uh-huh. Anyone else to jumble? Go here, do, do, let's try, uh-huh, uh-huh. Just trying to get us all on this, like, mega same platform. So, like, you know, it's, we can leave, like, you know, like, okay, got some, sh let's get some work done. Mm -hmm. Let's share one more roadblock and then we'll get into um, just kind of how we tackle things. Um, and thank you so much for sharing because again, I, I think these are, they're not just little, they're important. Yeah, one more and then we'll, we'll get moving. speak to that oh okay so, so we'll do one more maybe back yeah too fast uh-huh too fast uh-huh uh-huh 
bottleneck and communicate, that is great. I'm sure we might all experience this, but again, the quickness of ID in uh, two, three days. Let's implement, okay, didn't really work, now let's go. Anybody else, anybody else? Yes, no, yes, no, yeah, yeah, and then, oh, freshman, okay. Yeah, yeah, we feel that too, feel that too. Um, but the intrusiveness of like, hey, am I being too annoying, right? Am I just being like a needy girlfriend? So I text, I text, I email, I call, um, I Zoom appointment, I in-person appointment with all my students, and I also have the veteran population. Um, and so, like, and our transfer counselors, uh, we have a, a strategic calendar where we're rotating the form of communication with our students every single time with different populations. So think about like you have group A, B, and C, and then there's like one, two, three, four ways of, of communicating with each group. I'm having different variations of that per every single cycle. So because the, the strategy behind that was, okay, imagine me just receiving emails all the dang time, no, and then you're only getting those weird salesy text uh, and stop now and then call spam alert right so I had to figure out a way and I've developed a pretty good way of getting students to save my phone number into their phone books um, our calling number and my my uh, uh, our text phone number which we use uh, something called cadence mongoose I don't know if anyone uses that lifesaver anyone use mongoose or cadence oh my gosh should I like get sponsorship from them what Oh, I can't, they, I will like ride or die mongoose and uh, I also use uh, yet another mail merge, that's an add-on to Google Chrome, yet another, yet, yet another mail merge is like, how, how do y'all mail merge your students? You, do you guys mass mail your students at all? Mass email? Oh, Slate, Outlook, okay, I use yet another mail merge, um, that is fantastic, and then, um, what else do I, oh, you can book, do you guys have, you? how do you, how do students schedule appointments with you guys? Through a, through a, is that a system? There's like a CRM system through, how else? Bookings, through, how do you book? Like online, at website, online websites, okay. That's like you can book me, that's like what we use. Anybody, how? Tell us, tell us. See, there you go. It's it's a wide different array. How do you, that's like a great place to kind of just see how do you get students to book appointments with you guys? Before you can book me, before we utilized a a link that students can go where the counselors have personal act like it's our calendar or choice. It was just through the front desk. They had to call the front desk and say, hey, we want to book an appointment with my counselor. And then our front desk looks up their information and then um, an appointment is booked. Now we are able to now do that online with visits on through our Biola, our school page. They could book an appointment. And then we have a personal, a counselor just uses just a, a third party website that says, here's our calendar and our times and you could book it. And it automatically um, enters into the way that you want it formatted on your Google calendar if that's what you use. So when a student, I go, hey, you wanna meet with me? Or, or it's a really long email that it's like, this person, it's better just to do it over you know, some FaceTime, voice time. Boom, here's my you can book me, and it goes onto my calendar just the way that I want it to, of time, the reason that they're calling, all of that, do they wanna Zoom? And so that's, so we rotate that. There's variations, A, B, and C, one, two, three, four. How do I not become like this, hey, 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 do, do, do? And it's, I literally, sometimes I text my students, um, hi, 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 James, hi, see you, see you on it. hi, hi, and they're like, sometimes it's like, not all the time, but sometimes when I need like a response, I like trick them a little to pretend like they're your friend, you know, that you don't have your number saved for, you know, it's a little trick, okay, I just shared that with you. Um, they go, hey, response rate, great. Now I hooked you, so I have to say, who, they go, who is this, or hi, you answered back, oh, hey, it's Esther. It's your admissions counselor for Biola. Can you save this number? I use it to text, boom. Because now guess what? What you just did is you just sent your, your population, right, your contact information on your phone, and now it's like, why not? Oh, cool, that's a school I'm kind of interested in. Yeah, I'll just save this number so I know it's not spam. So the next time I get 
messages from this number, I know who it's from and why she's telling me, hey, there's a nursing deadline coming up, just FYI. Hey, do you need some more scholarship money? Let me know. Yeah, I do, cool. Um, I just got you 2,000 more dollars. <sighs> it has been such a, a game changer in the way of, cause, because before of this, it was just emails and oh my gosh, emails is building a relationship through email is so hard. It's so hard. Anyways, I went so ham on this because I'm like so passionate about the way that I text my students because I'm like low-key really proud of it. <laughs> like can't, I would literally, what's your name? Danny, I would be like, I would text you all caps, Danny, I love you. You can text me any time. Can you imagine if your admissions counselor was saying, hey, this is school you want to go to? Here's a baby lamb. This could be you. Hello? I'm so sorry. I'm so passionate about this, <laughs> clearly. That was like part of our what we did. OK. Um, and so this is, we just want to show. So Pretty much just got ahead of the, sh the, the slide, didn't derail, not derailing here. Um, but we just want to catalyze transfer mobility. And the w one of the ways that like we do that to you know, help them start and finish is through this interpersonal, let me get to know you, holistic, helping, supporting advocate role introduction. Like I make a grand introduction, letting them know, please don't spam, like don't delete me, please read the things I sent you because I'm just here to help you. Because the first question I usually ask is, or I let them know is, hey, I know you have a lot of choices, but if you, one of your choices, like you wanna be here, just know for our institution, for Biola, my job is literally the reason I pop up into your life to be this little like loving fairy just supporting you is to let you know that's my role. I get paid to do this, so here's my number, here's how you could contact me if you need to email me, I just let them know. So I try from the beginning to set that, set that relationship up well, why? Because how many, like, how many of us are deleting and just barely skimming through emails, I'm like, oh, interested in this program, and, like, and it's USC, but I'm not even reading their like, marketing emails, like, and those texts, like, am I alone here? Am I the only one who's like annoyed? No, like spam, y'all like spam? You guys like spam? Okay, cool, because your faces look like you're like, ooh, I love when I get a text about, oh, da -da 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 -da. okay, <laughs> cool, I'm not judging. Um, oh my gosh, 15 minutes, I'm so sorry, this is so much fun. So sad I didn't go, we, like we're so sad we didn't go earlier because now it's like I would have been friends with all of y'all like yesterday, <laughs> yesteryear. Um, but yeah, we just want to provide help and really good help, really cute help. Uh, increasing transfer advocacy by creating environments as transfer inclus inclusivity. We have done this, we are doing this. Three years ago when I got here, I specifically remember sitting with our events coordinator saying, hey, we're a freshman focused school. We need, a d well, like, I got to the root of like, where is transfer here? If this is like gonna be my team, you know, if this is gonna be the people that we root for, What's, why is the culture on campus like not seeing this population? And so three years ago it started, like I, sp I remember, like it was a long time coming. Angela has been doing this 15 years. Like she is like, I was like, Angela, I think transfer is your passion after this conference. She's like, I th you think that, I'm like, mm-hmm. I know it's your passion, but it's cha we have been doing this. We have changed slowly though, because this is like one of those deep ones where it's like, hey, let's get more transfer focus like sessions or shouting them out and giving them through the little things of like during an event, giving them a shout out and highlighting them, lifting up the amplifying their voices on campus and our events, integrating them. We started to do this with, with our events team and now it's like, oh, they're, I would say they're a population. It's like, yep, we can't forget the transfers. Now we're bringing, slowly bringing on um, international population. Like that's like the new people we're trying to bring up. But it's to just say, hey, you belong here. And the way that we did it, like I said, we, we went deep and it's been through a systematic approach. So with rec realizing the time, I really want us to get to some, some more conversation, but I do want to provide you with some of those takeaways 
that you um, that you came for. So here we go. So systemic approach. Uh, much of this is a is a long time coming. So I don't want you to to think, oh, pandemic happened and the, the you know the transfer undergrad admissions team had all of these changes. There, it was a slow buildup. Like I told you, the par the partnership building, the collaborating, identifying your silos, and then going after them, taking people to coffee, sitting down with them, asking them what's important to them, how to how does transfer student, what do they think about transfer student, how does a transfer student experience fit into the work that they're doing? Because the reality is, our campus partners are are working for our institutions because they also have a passion for students, right? They wouldn't be there with us, working with us otherwise. Um, they just they just need a little more education and they just need a little more access, right? And so some of what we do is, is we educate our peers um, and we help provide our peers with resources for what they can be looking at because they really want to be successful in their work, right? And so all we do is we just give them a, a little assist, right? If you're volleyball, just kind of help them out, give them a, a good pass so they can make that shot or that awesome touchdown, whatever sport you love, whatever that looks like. Um, this is what we do. And so I'm going to highlight a few ways that we did this, but there are a lot of little things, as Esther has already addressed, that led up to this. And, and a lot of that started with, let's just define who is the transfer student. And you and I know that has even changed now we're, we're talking about neo-traditional transfer students, right? Or neo-traditional students and transfer students fit into that. So, so the systemic approach, the first, interdepartmental collaborations. Here are a few examples of what I was speaking to. So what, what I think is important for you to know is our partnership with the Office of the Registrar at the admissions level is incredibly important because what are the top three questions that transfer students are wanting to know? How do my credits transfer? What's my time to graduate? How much is it gonna cost me to do that, right? So in order to help a student understand value, we need to be able to communicate this well. Prior to, about two, two years ago, we did not provide an admitted student with a transcript evaluation at the point of admission. This was problematic. My counselors had to do this. That was time consuming. My counselors are trying to cast value, right? Help a student belong. Help a student understand how how they can see themselves at Biola, and they also are were, acad were academic advising students, and that um, it just made the role incredibly taxing. And we do this year we do this for both spring students and fall students because we take spring students and we take fall students, and so it was just incredibly intense, and so the work was heavy, right, and so. I worked with our office of the registrar and I said, hey, can we do this at the point of admission? And now my conversation is, hey, can I do this for high interest inquiries? Super important because they really want to know this even before they're going to apply. And that's, that's the conversation I'm having now with them. And, and, and what tools are we needing you know, to do this well? Um, Re-engaging uh, the registrar of graduation by Office of Returns and yes. So the, you mentioned the stopout students. Very important because they are transfer students, so we do need to advise them. So I worked with the Office of Retention to, uh, to get a list of those students prior to, because I, I we would only see them at the point of admission. But I wanted to know, like, who are these students and can my team be advising them while they're at the community college so that they can successfully come back to Biola? So we worked with the Office of Retention to connect with those students. And then, the other more fun way, I think, to raise and elevate the transfer student story and the transfer profile on campus and, and create a transfer inclusive environment is celebrating National Student Transfer Week with your campus. This year, we were able to host it on campus and we had between eight and 10 campus partners hosting their own small gatherings, virtually and in person. We had a lot of goodies. Here's a look. That middle one is our President Corey hanging out with students at our picnic. He came. Uh, that's Esther. We, ha we had transfer stickers made. We had transfer t-shirts made. It was a week of transfer. Everybody was talking transfer. We had cross-campus communications sharing. We shared with staff. We shared with faculty. We shared with students on all of the different communication channels that we could. And it was a year buildup. I started asking. I'm asking now for funding for 
next year's transfer week, which is in October. Um, so s some of this is a slow burn or a long um, ramp up. Institutional initiatives, Esther's gonna speak to this a little more. Transfer consultant, we hired a student solely to work with this population. And it's a student worker position, solely to work. We train, we're, we train the student to help tell other students, uh, their peers, what community college courses to take, when, and we have this student reach out to them intentionally. And then of course, um, many of these students postponed, right? So they said, Angela, I can't come. And our financial packages sometimes change, semester over semester. Some of these students postponed for up to two years, right? Because they, and now it's like three years because we've been at this for a little while. And so we worked with financial aid to lock in the, the most competitive financial aid package for these students um, so that they weren't experiencing aid packages up and down, up and down. We said, we're gonna lock it in. Now because of that, because we did, we did well, we um, were able to partner with financial aid and our EAB consultant to increase our transfer student scholarship. So that was another win as, you know, off of this. So every scholarship increased for up, up to $8,000. So we're very excited about that. Base um, tuition is at 44, is that, that's not room and board though. Yeah, room and board is like 10, so about 54. So this is beautiful, we have need-based aid as well. Um, and then, he keeps in, I love it. We, we need to talk, let's talk. Um, absolutely, absolutely. So, and then Esther mentioned counselors being able to award students right in a con phone conversation or appointment, hey, I can award you an extra $2,000. If that's gonna help, that's what you need, I can do that. We worked with our advancement office and um, our financial aid office to have a discretionary fund so that we could do this with our transfer students for our transfer students. Yes, please. So let me, let me understand. So the way that it works at Biola is our senior leadership gives us a pool of funding um, and says freshman, uh, my, my counterpart that oversees freshman counselors, you can award this, and Angela, your team gets this. And then I say a percentage of that, I want counselors to have the agency to award. So I've made that decision. Is that what you're asking? Yes, yes, yes. and I've authorized them. And, and there's parameters. Anything above 3,000, let's talk. We have institutional aid cap so that we don't go over that. And so we do negotiate together and we work in partnership. Yeah, but anything, if it's like 1,000, 500, they can go ahead and award within their budget that they have as counseling team, okay? So frontline strategies and tactics. I'll introduce this and as Esther makes her way back up, um, each of these systemic you know, efforts had frontline strategies and tactics, and here's what we focus on. Value-add experiences, authentic advising, early transfer planning opportunities, and fresh marketing. Fresh marketing, so marketing that's engaging, captivating, marketing that's transfer specific. Um, this is what we focused on in, in our tactics. And Esther will share about the transfer consultant because this was her initiative that she led through the institution Transfer consultant, yeah. yeah. Do you want to give them an overview? But pretty much, um, pandemic hit like what February, March, 2020. During that time, I'm gonna speak really fast, okay? Because um, it's a lot. Um, our school. Do you guys know what McKinsey is, the consulting firm? Anybody? Okay, so a huge consulting firm came in uh, during the start of the pandemic. And then so during all this crazy pandemic, figuring all of this stuff out, we also had like university-wide led, like they, it was gonna happen anyway. Um, so we like huge, like just idea, 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 and implement, implement, implement. And so one of the initiatives that I, I thought of, this is, I give you all of this because it's a foresight. Foresight is very important. That's like the bottom line of what I wanna share with you guys. I thought about this idea um, in March, May, maybe April, April, May of 2020, okay? 
I was like, I think that this pandemic, this is before shutdown, vaccine, none of that. We don't know what the heck is going on, right? I think there's going to be a, a, a spike of students. I made this prediction of students who are going to postpone. I, I, I don't know if things are going to be open. I don't know. I don't know. Because, and I only had this foresight because I had family. Go, if you guys need to go. Um, before you leave, please take a business card. But foresight is so important. I made this prediction early on because I saw what was going on in Europe. My sister lives in Europe. And I was like, okay, I think it's going to get worse. So I think we should prepare for this. We did. We said, okay, let's get a student worker position just for, thank you. Oh, it's circling the top, I got cuts on the, my own on the bottom, thank you. Let's start it, let's create a student worker position where their sole job is going to be servicing this postponed, this new population, the sideline population. We have to re-engage the sideline population, why? Because they're going to, they, they want us, they want us, but life happened, something happened, so we can't forget about this population now. Why? Because they're going to be easy wins. They're going to be, we want to, it's now it's expanded. Our world has, something has happened, so now we have a new population. Let's engage with them. Bye. Love you, Raquel. So let's re-engage with them. So we came up with the, I came, we came up with the postponement process. This happens, they go into here, and then usually that's already happening, right? Because we've had postpones before, but right now it's how do we re-engage with them? So let's create a new communication system with them where we're trying to ask them, hey, you left? Well, tell us more. Tell us more about where you're leaving to and when you want to come back. And so we created a system, right, where previously admitted students now are entered into the system and then a student is contacted texted called remember the very the different variations of you know because it root it stems from let's build a relationship with students who want us right our, our university it's it's getting harder and harder to to grow our applicants so then with the ones that we have let's keep them how through the very from ABC one two three four save my number this is me letting you know I'm your advocate using that se student centered posture right of advocacy and really trying to support them and instead of like wanting something from them right that bottom line yes so you, you mentioned your CRM on on the back end we also worked with our uh, admissions data management team to identify how can we keep all these students because Esther's doing a great job at putting them in right but then the CRM has to allow my team to be able to pull those, to be able to have views in their dashboards or access or rosters, if you will, so that they can activate on these things. And I was so surprised that, like, like you, my friend, so surprised that the CRM couldn't do this or we hadn't thought about it. And then we worked and we did workarounds and we created systems so that the CRM can do this and so that we can continue to postpone students forward. And, um, and it, it, it's still not what I would love it to be you know, as far as how we keep student stories and follow along with them. Um, but what we've done since is before, like transcript evaluations, right? Semester over semester, my team was having to create new evaluations each time a student sat with them. Ew. So now what we do is it's, it's a live document, still a Google Doc, not my favorite. It's a live document that sits in our CRM. So my counselor can go in, click the link, and if it needs to be updated or if we need to have a, a class evaluated by a faculty or the office of the registrar, we just s click a beautiful little button and that populates a list in my registrar's um, team's, not mine, but my colleagues' team's um, rosters and then they go ahead and take care of that for us. If they need a syllabus, they ping Esther back and then Esther will go after that student and say, hey, you need a syllabus. It's just W wonderful the, where we've gotten, but it was a long time coming, probably a year, maybe a year and a half, if I'm remembering. It's kind of a blur, but it was, excuse me, it was a lot of work leading up. Like none of this, like I'm s talking really fast, but and also I'm really proud because this is in the span, I've only been here three years, but in three years I feel like man, we got work done, and I want to share that with you guys, right? So we figure out like where the student is going, when are you going to come back, and guess what? We strategically time communication that goes out to, to help them um, plan out courses. What I mean here is in September and October, I had the transfer consultant um, pull up a list of the community colleges that our postponed students are going to be attending. I had her research all of the times that there, the community college, when you guys are opening registration. And then from there, we had, we had 
um, this added value go out to this post one population saying, hey, we know at what's your community college name? Crowder College. Crowder College. We know Crowder College. They're going to open, uh, do spring registration in about a month or so. Do you want to sit down and meet with a counselor over Zoom so we could strategically plan your courses from Crowder College that will transfer into your specific major degree at Biola University? And I, a bottom line is strategic course planning needs to be intentionally timed. We're doing it on our university level because I'll it's- I'll say that as an academic advisor at the community mm -hmm. college level, there's nothing more important to me. Mm -hmm. If I know a student is going to transfer somewhere specific, mm -hmm. there's nothing more important than being able to reach out to a transfer advisor mm -hmm. um, or an admissions person that can help me help the student know what classes are going to transfer. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, because yes. otherwise, if they're yeah. not, Well, it changes mine. But he said, I know that I was going to go to Missouri State and I was going to do general business. So you help me plan for general business. But I just decided I'm transferring to entrepreneurship and I there's two classes I didn't take that I need to get into entrepreneurship. Can I read, can I take those? And so I mean, having that conversation is so important. But you guys have to understand that sometimes these community college kids have no clue what they want to major in until they step foot on your campus. And so we always, as a conversation, my team knows, we have with the students, it may work right here, right now, but should you choose to change your pathway, because we know it will, you may have to take additional courses later. And that's just part of that intrusive advising, holistic yes, advising uh, experience. Uh, for uh, it's a, something, something that we're working on, because we, we, we want students to have a taste of that. So with some of this, we did connect some students, not all, to our academic Another strategy, you know, try to sell this and get this. No, because my first step 